Okay, good morning class. So today we're looking at uh, exponents, or also known as indices. So at this point we have gone through um, some uh, basics or revision on what we've done last year. So the exponents and your powers and your index and all of those things. Okay. And we spoke about these numbers here. And uh, we remembered that a negative 1 to any odd number would also be, always be negative. A negative 1 to an even number will always be positive. Okay. So now we're looking at laws of exponents and deductions. People, we have done this in grade 8 last year, okay? So this is just a mere revision of what we have done last year, okay? If you don't understand, you're confused, please let me know. Or am I going too fast? Please let me slow it down, okay? But the first one was the law of um, indices and deduction, or the um, exponents and what is deduced from them. So we're looking at the multiplication first. So the rule says... When we're multiplying and base are the same, what do you do with the exponents? We add them. Not so. So that, once the bases are the same, as you can see both is a to the m times a to the n, we'll add that. So it will be a to the m plus n. So let's look at the example that they gave us. So it's x squared times x cubed. x squared times x cubed. It will simply be x to the exponent. Five. What would have written it as x? 2 plus 3, or x to the exponent 2 plus 3, which is x to the exponent 5. Let's look at number 2. So 2x squared times 2 to the 4. What would that one be? Will it be 4 or 2? Because, okay, somebody's saying 4. If you've got, uh, you got x squared times x4, what would that be? x6. Now why didn't he tell me to write the y? Because the base was x and the base remains the base. Can you see that people? Which means to say now that this is supposed to have been 2 to the 6. You guys understand? Okay. Look at number 3. I've got negative 4 raised to the cube times negative 4 to the 4. Okay, what would that be? What's negative times negative? Positive. Positive what? 4 to the exponent? You will agree with that? What would this be? Maybe. If it was negative 4 cubed times negative 4 to the 4. Is that the same or different to number 3? It is different because the exponent applies now to the negative sign as well. Is the basis the same here? Yes. So it will be written as the same base. And negative 4 to the 3 times negative 4 to the 4 will be negative 4 to the 7. Okay. Any confusion at this point? Okay. So also what we do. Let's look at number 4. we got negative 2 cubed. Now, okay, I actually have one explaining uh, more to the one I just done previously or the one in the lead. Are those bases the same? When I'm multiplying it, bases are the same. What do you do to the exponents? To add it. So this would be what? Negative 2 to the exponent? Okay. Okay, negative two to the exponent five. Look at number five. What is negative two cubed times negative two squared? Is that same or different? Different. Not so. So what will this be? Negative times negative is positive. positive. Two. The exponent. Five. And two to the exponent five is also what? Two to the five. Two times two. Four. 
Four. Four times two. Eight. Eight times two. Sixteen. Sixteen times two. What do this be positive and negative thirty-two? Negative. Y negative. Exponent is. Is there any confusion at this point? Yes. Am I moving too fast? Yes. Okay. The examples for exercise one on page. Okay. You also with me, eh? Now we need to look at division. Now what's the rule with regards to division? When you base it on the same and we're dividing, we subtract the exponents. My goal. The first and the last time I'm going to tell you not to talk while I'm teaching, okay? Okay? Don't waste my time, please. So we divide it and bases are the same way. Subtract the exponents. Okay. So let's look at a couple examples. Okay. First one says x to the exponent 7 over x to the exponent. So what would that be? x to the exponent 2. Look at number 2. You got a cubed over a. A cubed over a. I'm writing the answer. Can it be? A squared. A squared. Not so. So how did I get a squared? 3 minus 1, not so. And this one? 7 minus 5. What would b7 over b9 be? Where is the movies? At the bottom, not so. So the B must go at the bottom. So it's going to be 9 minus 7, which is? And what goes on top? You will agree with that. But what if I just apply the rule that I just spoke to you about now? Okay? Is that I subtracted 3 and 1, not so. 7 and 5. So the top one minus the bottom one. So if I apply it here, that's going to be b to the 7 minus 9. And 7 minus 9 is what? Negative 2. So what do we note this here? The sums are the? If the sums are the same, the answers must be equal. The answers should also be the same. So we can conclude, therefore, b to the negative 2 can be written as 1 over b. And that we will speak about shortly. I think that is to do with part d. Okay. b squared. Yes. Thank you. Seem to, the, the holiday seems to have been good for you. Yeah, very good. Okay, any confusion here? You're also with me. Okay. People, let's look at uh, C. Anything to the power zero is? One. Did we do this last year? Yes. Okay, so anything to the power zero is one. An example one is 3x raised to zero. So this would be one. What would 3 to the zero x be? That zero is only on the three. So only three becomes one. So what's the answer? One x. What is three to the is x raised to the zero? Three times one, which is? Can you see the difference? Yeah, the whole thing, the whole base was the power zero. So everything becomes? One. Yeah, the zero is only on the three, so only three becomes one. Can you see it? It's one x in other words. The zero is only on the x, so the only x becomes one. 
Is three times one is three. Okay. Look at number two. We got y to the zero. What is y to the zero? One. What is four b to the exponent zero? Four. Four times one, which is four. What is negative five a to the zero b squared? Negative five b squared. Why? Because why that a to the zero becomes one. Okay. Is there any questions? No. Okay. Neg negative index or negative exponents. Negative exponents. We got a, 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 a to the exponent negative n. Can be written as 1 over a to the n. As we had previously, we look here again. We had b to the minus 2 was 1 over b squared. So if we replace that 2 with that n, then you can conclude b to the minus n can be written as 1 over b to the n. That you can make a note of that. b to the minus n can be written as 1 over b to the n. Okay. Yes? So what if you get some? This one? Yeah, that's some. I'll give you examples now. Okay. So if you got negative x1, a to the minus n can be written as 1 over a to the n. So let's look at an example here. Example 1. If they give you x to the minus 1, what would that be? x to the minus 1. 1 over x, nice. Let's look at number 2. 1 over y to the minus 2. Um, 1 over? It will be 1 over 1 over y squared. Not so. Because our y to the minus 2 is what? 1 over? y squared. Can you see that? So that y to the minus 2 is 1 over y squared. What does this line mean here? Division. Divide. So that's the same as 1 divided by 1 over y squared. Which now becomes what? Becomes 1 times y squared over 1. Okay? Which is what? y squared over 1, which is? Y squared. No? Now if you look at this here, this answer is basically y squared over 1. So what did you notice here? Remember? The numerator we took down to become the denominator, the exponent became positive. Can you see that? Now it's moving from the denominator to the numerator. What do you now notice? Exponent become positive. So if you take a numerator and make it a denominator, the exponent becomes opposite to the exponent. So from negative it becomes positive. And we bring a denominator that is negative up, it becomes positive as a numerator and the exponent. You guys understand? Okay, so this comes with a bit of practice. So uh, you'll get said a lot of this. I'm in grade 9. Okay. You don't need that thing. Let's look at number 3. Let's see if you guys understood. Let's just explain now. So I got x minus 1 over y minus 2. Right. Write that down and you do it in your book quickly. Then we can discuss what the misunderstandings are. Okay. Okay, so what's your answer there? Why? 
squared over who got that right? What did you get, Michael? Cornelius? What did you get? Okay, just remember what's the rule as we said? If it's negative as a numerator, it will become positive as a denominator. So if it's negative as a denominator, it will become positive as a denominator. That's it. Let's look at number four. But for a negative 2 over B. Now, is this negative 2 on the 4 as well? No. no. Is it on the B? No. So if it's not there, then that number will remain where it is. Okay. So do number 4 quickly. Right, so what would this be? So that would go down. Must the B come up? Yes. Is, does the B have a negative on it? No. no. So must the B come up? No. no. It stays where it is. So what do I write? 4 over B A squared. Or a squared b. Why did I write it as a squared b and not b a squared? Alphabetical order. Number five. We've got 2 over 3 raised to exponent negative 1. 2 over 3 raised to exponent negative 1. What do that become? Sorry? 3 over 2. Do you all agree with that? Some of you are... Who got that answer? Okay, not all of you, okay? Let's just take a step back. What did the rest of you write? If something is raised to a high exponent, what do we do? Multiply the exponents. Not so. There's a 1 and there's a 1. In other words, this will be 2 to the minus 1. Over 3 to the negative 1. Which is now what? This is negative as a denominator, so where must it go? To the top. Negative as a numerator, where must it go? Bottom. So what will this be? In other words, a rule can be now derived from here. Is that? If you have a fraction raised to a negative number, so if you've got a over b raised to the exponent minus n, is the rule you guys can write down? Can be written as b over a to the positive n. So what did I do? Did you see 2 over 3 was simply 3 over 2 to the 1, positive 1. So a over b to the negative n can be written as b over a to the n. It's a bit confusing initially, but as you go through it, you play with it more, it will become more clear, more easier. Let's look at number 6. 3 over 4 raised to negative 2. So I'll give you a chance to do that one quickly. I'll just pause the video. Okay, so what's your answer? 8 over 6. <laughs> what is 4 squared? 4 times 4 which is? 16 years. What's 3 times 3? 9. 16 over 9, not 8 over 6. But anyway, let's do it quickly. What do we get? It's a fraction raised to a negative number, not so. So what do we do? Swap it around. I'm applying this rule here. No? So this is going to be 4 squared and what's 4 squared? 16 and 3 squared is? Sorry? You can write it as uh, 1 and 7 over 9, yes? But there's no number that goes into 16 and into 9. Right? You guys got it? Okay. 
Okay, we'll get some work on that of course as well. So E raising to a higher power. Okay. So here we got the raise to a power. Okay. Okay, so if we have a base raised to a high exponent, what do we do? Multiply the exponents, not so. So if we got A raised to the M over A to the M raised to the exponent N, can be written as A to the M times A or M A. So this we get the first example that gave us in this category. We got x squared raised to the power of three. What will this one be? X to the six. six. How do we get six? Two times three, which is x to six. We could have gone from the straight into the answer, no problem. No. We multiply the exponents. Okay, the base remains the base. Let's look at number two. You've got a to the exponent 5 raised to the 3 over a squared raised to the 4. Right, so what will this be? a to the 5 times 3, which is 15 over a to the? When we're dividing at base of the same, what do you do to the exponents? Subtract, so that will be a to the 15 minus 8, which is? Right. So the last part here. And if we are told a power of a product, a power of a product. So here we have two bases inside here. So that exponent of that m applies to that a and to that b. Not so. So in other words, if you've got a, b to the m, is a 1 and a 1, so that will be a 1 times m, b 1 times m. That will be a to the m, b to the m. Do you all agree with that? Is there any confusion? Right. So let's look at the first example. You've got 2x to the 3 squared. 2x to the exponent 3 squared. What will this be? 2, what's the exponent on this 2? 1. So it will be 2 to the? 2, x to the? So 3 times 2 of course is? 6. Okay. And 2 squared is what people? 4. So it's 4x. Four Last one before we're going to do sums. Sums on the own. You've got a squared b raised to the exponent 74. The full lesson can be found in the description box below. Okay. So you've got a squared times b all raised to the exponent 4. So this will be simply a to the exponent 8, because that's 2 times 4 is 8. B, there's no exponent here, so there's a 1. And 1 times 4 is? So you've got A, 8, B, 4. Okay, you guys understand? So with that, you should be able to do ex uh, the examples. For, uh, so you can do now exercise 1, which is on page uh, 14. Okay.